I'm uh, Philip Schmidt. I'm uh, part of Intel RealSense, and I'm a, a software engineer working on SLAM algorithms, sensor fusion algorithms, uh, with focus on robotic applications. And also, my background is in uh, uh, robotics, robot control, and um, uh, developing algorithms for uh, for space robots at the German Space Agency. And Today, I'd like to talk about our recent robotics development and how you can leverage uh, Intel RealSense technology for your robotic projects. I'd like to start off with a short overview of um, two of our cameras that are targeted at robotics and afterwards present a common hardware configuration in terms of uh, compute and perception. Um, afterwards, in the main section of the talk, I talk about how to use these t uh, two cameras for robot navigation, starting with uh, SLAM, a uh, brief recap of uh, previous experiments and results. Uh, afterwards, talk about the combination of the two cameras, um, what w one can uh, do with them, uh, before I talk about occupancy mapping, which is an, a crucial input for path planning and can also enable um, obstacle avoidance. And we actually open sourced uh, one, one ROS package there just, just a few months ago that I would like to highlight. Afterwards, I'll talk about uh, how to get started. And um, uh, in particular, one open source project um, that I think is interesting and, and can act as reference for your robot development. And we'll have some Q&A afterwards. So these are the two cameras I'm going to talk about. On the one hand, the, on the left side, the D435i. Many of you might already be familiar with our depth cameras, um, our D400 series. Um, these are all active uh, stereo cameras that have uh, an ASIC that does stereo matching. And uh, the 435i, uh, we added an IMU, accelerometer and gyroscope to it, um, which, um, which is very useful for uh, uh, applications on mobile robots. On the other hand, there's the tracking camera, T265, which we just launched beginning of this year, and it does visual inertial odometry or SLAM on board, so it's able to determine its position and orientation in space. And I'll talk about both of them in a bit more detail in the next few slides. So the 435i, it is a stereo camera, has around five centimeter baseline and um, has an ASIC that does stereo matching on board and outputs the, the depth. From that, together with the RGB imager on the side, you can um, basically get a colored point cloud or RGBD as um, you hopefully already saw during the demos. Um, on top of that, we have here in the center a projector that um, uh, projects a semi-random pattern in the environment and this can, can help um, for, for environments that don't have a lot of uh, features to still obtain a high fill rate. Um, targeted at mobile applications or on mobile platforms, it has a global shutter to avoid any motion blur and a relatively wide field of view of up to 90 degrees, which can help for obstacle avoidance. On top of that, we integrated the IMU, as mentioned, accelerometer and gyroscope, which can help to determine the orientation in space and for the registration of the point clouds and also problems such as SLAM visual inertial odometry. For those that uh, haven't seen the camera yet, this is what it, uh, what it does. It um, outputs on top um, to the RGB stream. It also outputs a depth map, um, which is encoded in that video ranging from blue for close values for each pixel to red for away values. And uh, since these are spatially aligned and, and temporally aligned, um, factory calibrated and hardware synchronized, one can obtain um, this colored point cloud. And as you can imagine, this is very useful information to, for, for a robot for things like obstacle, obstacle avoidance, mapping, reconstruction, and so on. Here you can see the IMU output on top, uh, some, some filtering 
that estimates the orientation since we're able to measure gravity, um, basically roll and pitch with the oscillometer and with the gyroscope um, integrate the, the rotation. On the other hand, there's the T265, the, our tracking camera. It's also a stereo camera, um, but here we use a very wide field of view fish eye lenses, which enable an accurate and robust SLAM. It also has the same IMU, um, but on top of that, the Movidius Mira 2 accelerator, where we run our whole algorithm. And one algorithmic feature that I would like to highlight is relocalization. By that, we are able to, um, the camera is able to detect when it returns to a previously seen space, and by that is able to correct any drift that was accumulated. It's also referred to as loop closure in robotics. Using the same feature, we are able to create a map of one space and load up the map the next time, register the camera within it, and, uh, to, and uh, assure um, consistent performance for that space in terms of drift. I already mentioned that the whole SLAM is um, run on board and uh, we have almost 180 degree field of view. The whole camera is uh, pretty small, it's around six centimeter baseline. Uh, the camera is only around 60 uh, gram and uses less than 1.5 watt. But this gives an idea of what the camera does. Uh, it estimates its own position and orientation in space. You can see how well the estimated motion matches with the actual physical motion. And uh, at the same time, the algorithm estimates its own accuracy or confidence, which is here depic depicted in uh, green. And you can assess the accuracy by how well it's returning to the, to the red cross. These are the raw sensor streams, so one can get an idea of the very wide field of view. This is a, a look inside the camera. As I already mentioned, we are doing um, tightly coupled visual inertial odometry with, with stereo fish eye, and the whole algorithm is running here on the Movidius Mira 2 VPU uh, for a vision processing unit. Um, one, and it outputs poses via USB 2 or USB 3 if um, you're interest, interested in the raw sensor streams. It um, offers poses at 200 hertz and also at very low latency, so this can be used for robot control of field platforms, but also faster dynamics such as drones. And one feature I would like to highlight for robotics is that we are able to take wheel odometry measurements and fuse them inside the camera to provide even better robustness. And this is platform agnostic and offloading the main compute so one can use a a uh, rather small host um, to run other robotic applications, such as the robotic development kit uh, mentioned by Paul. So this is a very common configuration uh, where one would use uh, the camera with a, with a host and also some kind of um, accelerator for computer vision or AI workloads, in this case the Mirad X, which is also in the neural compute stick. And I argue that on top of that, to get the most accurate and robust SLAM, um, one would also add a um, T265, as you will see in the following experiments. So in this section, I'm going to talk first about SLAM, um, a recap of some, a few different experiments using uh, first D435i with some open source SLAM, then afterwards um, combining that with T265 poses uh, for reconstruction, afterwards talking about the combined use of both cameras to get the both, uh, best out of both, and occupancy mapping afterwards. So in this configuration, we are using an Intel NUC on, uh, on this uh, hamster robot that you probably saw outside, and we're using the D435i as input for the SLAM, RGBD plus IMU. And one can see the robot traveling here around the cubicles, how it does the reconstruction, and in the end, it accumulated some amount of drift, but then is able to detect the loop closure and to correct for that, and also to optimize the whole map. 
And if you're, if you're interested in setting this up yourself, we have, uh, we have some instructions online that you can uh, follow step by step. And it's pretty straightforward using ROS and, and that uh, ROS package. Nevertheless, this has a few limitations in uh, terms of SLAM. One of them is the robustness. For example, there are degenerate configurations such as uh, blank walls and with a 90 degree field of view. Um, it's, uh, to put it the other way around, to make this a more robust, one straightforward improvement is to increase the field of view. So that's what, what we did with the T265. And another important reason is that this algorithm, um, as you can imagine, takes a lot of compute. Um, it might be one of the heaviest workloads on your host. So we were interested in uh, trying to offload that, in this case, directly on the camera with the Momedios. So here in this second experiment, in this second experiment, we were using the same robot, same host, uh, the Intel NUC, and adding the T265 on top, and using post output, output from the T265, and feeding it together with the RGBD into the, the same mapping or reconstruction. And you can see the map is a bit cleaner, but um, even easier to see is the drift in the very end. There's only very small drift that one can notice. And again, it does loop closure and corrects, but this is uh, pretty small. So then we were interested um, how to combine these cameras, uh, what one can do with them. And one of the simplest thing one, one can do is to use this colored point cloud and transform it from the camera frame into a common inertial reference frame. And uh, you see that on the right here that the environment appears static um, despite the, the moving cameras. And this is a computationally expensive problem, which is um, in this case solved by the T265, and in the end it's just a single uh, coordinate transformation. And you can find that um, sample application in uh, our liberal sense. And there's also a blog post that we have related to tracking plus depth. One of the things we offer is this uh, 3D printed mount, which is already calibrated and configured for uh, these extrinsics. And uh, online you can also find an OpenCV tool that calibrates uh, between the two for some custom configurations. Okay, another uh, combined use of the two cameras is uh, for occupancy mapping, which is um, one of the crucial inputs to, uh, um, the to the navigation stack, apart from the robot post itself. And uh, this, we just open sourced this as ROS package uh, just a few months ago, and it is part of our ROS wrappers that you find under this uh, URL. What it does, it, uh, again, it transforms the point cloud and accumulates it over time and projects it onto the 2D uh, space. So this is a pretty light application which uh, doesn't take a lot of um, compute and can be directly used as input for the, for the path planning for ROS navigation stack, for example. Now we put all of it together with a, with a simple path planner and A star. Same configuration on a Kubuki platform um, from the turtle board. And by that we are able to, to obtain an autonomous platform that is able to explore an, an unknown space, to map it, as one can see here, the walls, the furniture, and the chairs, and uh, taking user input to plan and execute a path. By, by that, with that pipeline, we also enable obstacle avoidance and avoidance of dynamic obstacles. As you can see here, the obstacle enters the field of view, it is mapped, and the path is um, dynamically replanned. Now, in this section, I'd uh, like to talk about how you can get started um, with a similar setup, or how you can uh, leverage this for your own robotic project. 
and I'd like to highlight one, in particular, one open source project, which is the, the same RV Hedgehog that you've already seen. It has, um, it is built using the robotic kit and then adding a, a base for the robot using all um, open source design, uh, some, some 3D printed parts as well as electronic parts and some uh, custom PCBs. And you can find the whole part list on the project website. And also the software setup. And I'd like to talk about some, at least some of the software setup, some of the dependencies. It is using our LibRealSense, uh, RealSense SDK, which is cross-platform in this case on Ubuntu. And um, that SDK also supports a variety of different uh, wrappers, um, such as Python, for example, and, and other ones. And in this configuration, we are using the ROS wrappers, which are in, uh, in the next repository. So here you can see the, our ROS repository. And, um, and basically that all the, all the topics, all the sensor streams and the computed output is mapped into ROS topics, such as the colored point cloud here. Now this is the, here I'm showing the software stack in simulation. It is again using Gazebo to emulate the environment, to simulate the environment and emulate the sensor input. And in Arvis Fure, you can see the world model um, that the robot is building. Again, it starts in an unknown environment and is building the, the occupancy map as it goes. And is also taking user input in terms of a goal configuration. And as you can imagine, this is very useful to, uh, to develop quickly and, and test and so on, and doesn't run out of battery, for example. And one can, again, deploy that directly on the real robot using real um, robot, using real sensor inputs, as you can see here. Same robot, it's moving around, it already mapped that environment. This is the reconstruction. Um, taking a user input in terms of goal positions, planning and executing the path. And that's it.